I hung out with Jack in homeroom, English, history, computer, music, and science, which were all the classes we had together. The teachers assigned seats in every class, and I ended up sitting next to Jack in every single class. So I figured either the teachers were told to put me and Jack together, or it was totally an incredible coincidence. I walked to class with Jack, too. I know he noticed kids staring at me, but he pretended not to notice. One time, though, on a way to history, this huge 8th grader who was zooming down the stairs two steps at a time accidentally bumped into us at the bottom of the stairs and knocked me down. As the guy helped me stand up, he got a look at my face, and without even meaning to, he just said, Whoa! Then he patted me on the shoulder like he was dusting me off and took off after his friends. For some reason, me and Jack started cracking up. That guy made the funniest face, said Jack as we sat down at our desks. I know, right? I said. He was like, whoa, I swear, I think he wet his pants. We were laughing so hard that the teacher, Mr. Roche, had to ask us to settle down. Later, after we finished reading about ancient Sumerian built sundials, Jack whispered, do you ever want to beat those kids up? I shrugged. I guess. I don't know. I'd want to. I think you should get a secret squirt gun or gun or something and attach it to your eyes somehow. And every time someone stares at you, you would squirt them in the face. With some green slime or something, I answered. No, no, with slug juice when dog mixed with dog pee. Yeah, I said, completely agreeing. Guys! said Mr. Rush from across the room. People are still reading. We noticed and looked down at our books. Then Jack whispered, Are you always going to look this way, August? I mean, can't you just get plastic surgery or something? I smiled and pointed to my face. Hello, this is after plastic surgery. Jack clapped his hand over his forehead and started laughing hysterically. Dude, you should see Sue, your doctor, he answered between giggles. This time, the two of us were laughing so much we couldn't stop, even after Mr. Roche came over and made us both switch chairs with the kids next to us. Mr. Brown's precept for October was, Your deeds are your monuments. He told us that this was written on some tombstone of some Egyptian guy that died thousands of years ago. Since we were just about to start studying ancient Egypt and history, Mr. Brown thought it was a good choice for a precept. Our homework assignment was to write a paragraph about what we thought the precept meant or how we felt about it. This is what I wrote. This precept means that we should be remembered for the things we do. The things we do are the most important things of all. They are more important than what we say or what we look like. The things we do outlast our mortality. The things we do are like monuments that people build to honor heroes after they've died. They're like the pyramids that the Egyptians built to honor the pharaohs. Only instead of being made out of stone, they're made out of memories people have of you. That's why your deeds are like your mon monuments, built with memories instead of with stone. My birthday is October 10th. I like my birthday. 10-10. It would have been great if I had been born at exactly 10-10 in the morning or at night but I wasn't. I was born just after midnight, but I still think my birthday is cool. I usually have a little party at home, but this year I asked my mom if I could have a big bowling party. Mom was surprised but happy. She asked me who I wanted to ask for my class, and I said everyone in my home room, plus Summer. That's a lot of kids, Augie, said Mom. I have to invite everyone because I don't want anyone to get their feelings hurt if they find out other people are invited and they aren't, okay? Okay, Mom agreed. You even want to invite the what's the deal kid? Yeah, you can invite Julian, I answered. Jeez, Mom, you should forget about that already. A couple of weeks later, I asked Mom who was coming to my party and she said, Jack Will, Summer, Reed Kingsley, both Maxes and a couple of other kids said they were going to try to be there. Like who? Charlotte's mom said Charlotte had a dance recital earlier in the day, but she was going to try to come to your party if time allowed, and Tristan's mom said he might come after a soccer game. So, that's it? I said, so that's it? 
I said. That's like five people. That's more than five people, Augie. I think a lot of people just had plans already. Mom answered. We were in the kitchen. She was cutting up one of the apples we had just gotten at the farmer's market into teensy weensy bites so I could eat it. What kind of plans? I asked. I don't know, Augie. We sent out the Evites kind of late. Like, what did they tell you, though? What reasons did they give? Everyone gave different reasons, Augie. She sounded a bit impatient. Really, sweetie, it shouldn't matter what their reasons were. People had plans. That's all. What did Julian give as his reason? I asked. You know, said Mom. His mom was the only person who didn't RSVP at all. She looked at me. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I laughed because I thought she was making a joke, but then I realized she wasn't. What does that mean? I asked. Never mind. Now go wash your hands so you can eat. My birthday party turned out to be much smaller than I thought it would be, but it was still great. Jack, Summer, Reed, Tristan, and both Maxes came from school, and Christopher came too, all the way from Br Bridgeport with his parents, and Uncle Ben came, and Aunt Kate and Uncle Poe drove in from Boston, though Tata and Papa were in Florida for the winter. It was fun because all the grown-ups ended up bowling in the lane next to ours, so it really felt like there were a lot of people there to celebrate my birthday.